The Congolese citizenship. On paper, it looks really good, but in reality, how many of the 80 plus million Congolese people actually have an identity? Yes. If you are a Congolese person who has been to a Congolese embassy, let us know in the comments how was your experience really? because they really be having very bad service there. <laughs>
or they have to prove that the Congolese parents are still Congolese citizens at the time of the application. So we will now move to the second way that you can get Congolese citizenship. The second way that you can get Congolese citizenship is by registration. And this applies mostly to people who are married to Congolese nationals or to people, to children who are adopted by Congolese nationals. For children who are adopted by Congolese nationals, the process may be a bit easier because there are children. So I would imagine that they will be categorized in the same rank as people who are biologically born of Congolese parents. But for those foreign nationals who are married to Congolese nationals, the requirements are a bit hard in, this, in the sense that it is required that at the time of the application, the couple has to be married for at least seven years and they have to still be married at the time of, of the application. And now the third way that you can get a Congolese citizenship is by naturalization. And like in most countries, this requires you to live in Congo for a certain amount of years. Usually it is between five to seven. Now the difficulties with enforcing this one, this requirement, really can be seen when dealing with people from the neighboring countries. In Congo, there's still this idea that to be Congolese, you have to look a certain type or you have to have a certain physical appearance. But before you blame the Congolese people for this, I would explain why it is understandable for people to react that way. Because I think thinking this way comes from a place of fear. Congo is a country that has been going through a lot of unrest. And a lot of people from Congo's neighboring states have been cited to be active participants in these activities that have seen millions of people lose their lives. So ultimately, I mean, it's human nature. If you see someone who looks like your enemy or something, of course, you're going to assume that they are are your enemy unless you have alternative ways of proving that they are not. If you are Congolese like me today, we don't know how many of our 80 plus million Congolese people actually have some type of identity documents or some ways of identifying themselves. So in a way, the people are left to identify who belongs to Congo and who doesn't belong to Congo on their own. So they rely on things like facial features and accent or the way that people pronounce certain words in certain languages of the country to tell who is Congolese and who is not. And we would all agree that this is not the right way to go about it. So I feel like that is going to be there as long as the Congolese state does not establish strong ways of defining Congolese citizenship. And this would include things like identifying Congolese citizens. In every country, like here in Australia where I am, people have identification documents, you know, ID cards, you know, you have your driver's license. It would help the people have a sense of awareness about who is Congolese, who is not, what characterizes a Congolese citizen and what does not. That's the way that I feel like we can, the country can navigate that problem. Anyway, I will not go too deep into that because it was not a topic for today, but these are basically the main ways that you can obtain a Congolese citizen. So thank you so much for tuning in. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and also subscribe if you are new. Let me know in the comments what you think about the Congolese immigration policies and whether or not you found this video useful. And if you are Congolese, let us know in the comments what were some of your experiences as far as going to Congolese embassies are concerned. We all have funny stories of going to Congolese embassies. First of all, the customer service sucks. <laughs> like literally, I was in Burundi at some point and we went, I remember I went with my mom to um to the congolese embassy because i needed to renew my passport because i was in kenya and my family was on holidays in burundi so i just joined them in burundi it's because there's a congolese embassy there we just said that i should apply for my for my passport from burundi and we went the, the customer service is horrible at congolese embassies we went there the lady who was the administrator in that embassy she was not even paying attention to us you know she was talking to us as if she was frustrated she told us that we have to make photocopies and things like that and we're just like how can we make it do you guys have machines here or something like that and she was like no just go and look outside and she had an attitude that was just ugly ugly attitude and she held us there basically until we were able to get my dad to call the ambassador actually it wasn't the ambassador it was someone who was acting as the ambassador he knew my dad or they were friends and so my dad had to call him and then he had to call the administrator and tell her to send us in and then as soon as the lady received the call from the ambassador then she started running she's like oh um the the, the 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 ambassador wants you guys to go up and she's she became friendly and we're just like this is so bad like you're supposed to treat everybody equally you're supposed to deliver services to people 
equally they, they shouldn't have to have connections before you treat them with respect if you are a congolese person who has been to a congolese embassy let us know in the comments how was your experience because they really be having very bad service thank you so much for tuning in and i will see you guys next time in the next videos bye